the, um, so the same thing, the continuing saga of, uh, you know, if you look at it 20 years ago, TCT, there were uh, 16 consecutive five-minute sessions on transcatheter mitrals, and 20 years later, you could argue that we're still in uh, pre-batting practice of what looks more like a 40-year runway than a 25-year TAVR runway. So, um, the, uh, uh, so, let's see, we got the wrong talk, which is not easy here. So you may get to hear about CardiBand first. Um, let me escape this. Let's try that again. How about that one? <laughs> okay. We'll see which one's easier. Um, so uh, this is uh, the Edwards version of this, obviously. Uh, and we started with Fortis um, and disclosures. And so as has already described, um, you know, this is uh, a system to eliminate mitral regurgitation and preserve the cords, in this case utilizing the native leaflets. And you can see on the right open frame cells to allow uh, atrial flow and this was designed um, already with both transapical and transeptical approach, much like the discussion we just had. Uh, I think that all this will head towards transeptal, and uh, fortunately, you know, Anson lives on the right side of the border to be able to see and use all these things early and first and to get them headed in that right direction. But you can see from the design of this, and you'll see from some of the pictures, that this is a symmetrical design uh, with the left atrial and left ventricular anchors. Uh, it's primarily directed towards a superannular position with a tapered outflow piece to minimize LVOT obstruction that, that John talked about, uh, and then has the, the ceiling skirt uh, to try to get to zero mitral regurgitation. And it has already been designed as both transapical and transeptical, transeptal, easy for you to say, uh, as Mike alluded to, uh, and fundamentally, you'll see both uh, animations show it's essentially the same regardless of which direction you're coming from with ventricular release, uh, atrial release, and then valve release. And uh, you can see in the design the intent, obviously, like everything we've talked about, is to minimize the risk of left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. But as already alluded to, the, the whole issue is in the screening and the engineers and everybody looking at the right cases and trying to get the cases screened just right, you know, with an ejection fraction somewhere between, you know, 39 and 41 percent. Uh, and, and so every angle gets to be the right way because everybody wants to have the best success going forward uh, as you get out of feasibility trials, try to move to, to um, uh, pivotal trials. I already touched on, uh, as Paul said, it's very important in the mitral space to get the right angle of insertion. Uh, in Fortis, we actually would take it out and start over. Haven't had to do it with cardiac cue. Uh, but you see, basically, it is passing it through. And then uh, the first release is just opening the LV anchors. And uh, the, you'll see in the uh, case a balloon to show that you haven't captured any cords. Once you release the LV anchors, then it's grasped the leaflets. And once the leaflets are grasped, you'll see that here. Uh, and it's obviously quite straightforward once you do that. It's not like trying to grasp it with the mitral clip. And then you go to the atrial side. And then fundamentally, uh, you're at the end of the procedure because when you have the atrial release, the valve springs free. Uh, you advance the nose cone. At that point, you've released the atrial side. It's locked in place, and then simply remove the nose cone, uh, and you can come out from the transapical side. Uh, and so fundamentally, except for one case, that's the way all of this started. Um, here is a transapical procedure with the guide wire uh, from transapical position, and then the balloon used to show that we haven't captured the cords uh, in spite of Samir's spaghetti roll this uh, morning, we're trying not to have spaghetti rolls with the valve. Uh, this then is the LV anchor release. It's insertion through the mitral valve uh, in really a very simple three-step procedure. Retract the sheath. It releases the LV anchors. You'll see the anchors come out. Uh, then they're going to be advanced 
Once that's done, uh, we have valve expansion and leaflet capture in the, on the LV side. Uh, and again, as noted um, by both of the others, this is done primarily with echo. Uh, fluoro cannot stand up to it, but you can see leaflet capture. And then once you've done that, it's nose cone advance to release the left atrial anchors. And just advancing the nose cone expands the left atrial anchors and positions the valve in place. At that point, you're done with deployment and it is simply remove the nose cone. Then angiographic assessment, an LV-gram, like the others, these things, once they get situated in their symmetrical venue, uh, fundamentally seem to have no real mitral regurgitation. Uh, and then echo shows the same thing. So, um, there was a transceptal case done in 2012 in compassionate use. After that, 11 cases uh, were done uh, transapically. Uh, again, two-thirds functional. LVEF ranges from below 20 to uh, up to normal range. And that's what's being looked at now for the reasons that Mike alluded to, and you'll see at the bottom, uh, related to patient selection. We know that about all these uh, new devices that we're trying. It's getting the patient right, making sure that we pick survivors and things that you can accomplish. Success rate for this piece in the early stages was 82%, two procedural deaths, one with the interaction with the mechanical aortic valve, and then malpositioning with some subleaflet calcification and all the calcification we've talked about, and Myra's going to talk about some more. Um, and then uh, back to the aspect of case selection and I think it's one of the reasons that everybody is going as slowly as we've talked about. You touched on the aspect of what screening failure rates and how do you get exactly the right thing so nobody dies and everybody has the right outcome. Um, so this has already moved to transeptal uh, as discussed and as you know, uh, Anson summated that everything's going to wind up being transeptal one way or the other. This has uh, brought on uh, for cardiac Q early on the phases of wire techniques and the difficulty of everything from where you make the transeptal puncture uh, to getting the right space to be able to approach the valve uh, to uh, snaring or not snaring the wire and controlling the wire. Uh, and as you do that, whether it produces, um, my, uh, we reduces valve regurgitations that cause uh, hemodynamic compromise and problems with cases that are going to have to be figured out to get this part exactly right. This is a quick um, view of the transeptal procedure that fundamentally you're going to see is exactly the same thing in reverse, but it's the LV anchors released, then leaflet capture from the LV side again, obviously coming in from the other side. After the uh, leaflets are captured, it's pulling it back, and you're going to see the same thing happen then on the atrial side, that when you release the no, when you release the valve, uh, it deploys the left atrial anchors and the valve is in place and then it's simply the removal of the nose cone. And out. Uh, and here's the same thing of wire testing confirming the path without cordal uh, capture. And this shows you um, just the, the still photos of the inner atrial septum, left atrium, and uh, in this case, a snare with a transeptal approach. And then post, you can see again the angiogram showing no mitral regurgitation, echo showing no mitral regurgitation, the valve in place, uh, and you can see in the bottom right-hand side uh, the, uh, the occluder device after the procedure. So the current status, uh, a compassionate use experience finished. Currently, the U.S. trial is enrolling. It's partially enrolled. There are half a dozen sites looking at 20 to 25 patients. I would say right now the screening uh, failure rate is higher because everybody's looking to control exactly what happens coming out the other side. Screening is underway for the relief trial uh, and CE mark um, with the, the idea that this is going to try to have more than one size, reduced delivery profile, uh, and then the 
transeptal approach, although technically more difficult, is ultimately going to be the way all these procedures are done. Thank you. So, David, thank you for that summary. Um, given that there's one size right now, and you mentioned the higher screen failure rate, um, to, you know, possibly with this device, how many of them are, do you think are failing or, or screening out because of the size limitation right now? Um, so I, I would say it's certainly less than half, probably less than a third. And I think more of it really turns out to be the issues that you know very well of the angles and uh, Myra talked earlier today about, well, what if you started doing uh, septal ablation early on before you even got to the transcatheter mitral cases? And then uh, finally, the other issue uh, are the, the approaches that we've talked about, about how do you find the right patient? And, you know, this occurred, as you very well know, in the face of co-apt and competing trials and then transcatheter mitral valves coming into play uh, as, as well as um, when you're in a place where surgeons are very good, which all these programs have, who's really operable, who's not, who's high risk, who's low risk. And once you, once, once you start trying to put the high risk patients in and low enough ejection fractions, then the screeners and the company, likewise, aren't really as interested in those patients. We'd like, now like to have the low risk. Oh, gee, they don't really qualify. Okay, where are we going to compromise in the middle? So I think that's really the problem. And what about the concept of NEO-LVOT? Is that also as much of a concern, you think, with the way the mechanism of this valve secures? I mean, it grasps the leaflet. So I, I, th I think it is, um, but I think that, um, as, as John may have said and pointed out earlier, it's about the engineers, and it's about the theoretical components. And fundamentally, I actually thought John was going to use some black ball vote like a fraternity vote. It's not really weighted. It's if they find one, they go ding, and let's get it out. And in and, and so many things, even the post-screening call, it's a discussion and then the fight with, okay, look, we think we can do this case safely. Yeah, but we don't think you can, and we're not doing the case. And so I, you've got to find this balance to get these cases done, to get through feasibility trials, and to find out you know, how these valves really function and where do we get to pivotal right. trials. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you.